Hi everybody, welcome to Z Reviews. Okay, I want you to ignore most of the stuff on my desk. There's a separate video coming out where I shoot off everything. We're here to talk about the Topping A30 and the Cachello Ebbs Arcle Pro. Now these are two headphone amplifiers that go into the same category as my previous shootout, which was the Liquid Spark and the JDS Labs Atom. And I was nice. it was nice enough for a patron to say, hey, I have an extra Magni 3 I'm not using. Do you want to use it for your shootout? And I'm like, hell yeah, mofa, send that shit in. And he did. So here's the Magni 3. So now I've got every $100 headphone amplifier, and that'll come up in another video. It's not this video. Because we need to spend some time talking about these two amplifiers in this video because they deserve their own video. Start with the topping or start with the Gashelli? They both have... I feel very Doug DeMiro, because they both have quirks and features. Quirks and features! Yay! Alright, let's talk with the topping. So, now, I loved the MX-3, the little desktop amp. You plugged into the headphone out, and it was like, wow, this could power my 600s, and it sounds great. So, 110 bucks for what everyone is calling, like, a competition to these guys? Shit, I'll shell that out. And the first thing I noticed when I unboxed this thing was the power brick. You see the Gashelli Labs here. That's the power brick for the Gashelli Labs. That's the power brick for the shit Magni. Um, that's the power brick for the Liquid Spark. And the power brick for this is that thing. And it's very reminiscent of what my own stack has. And those are several, no, oh, I just, just did that. Those are several hundred dollars. That's 300, that's like 325. And it's a 14 volt push pull. And what that means, again, ignore this, please. What that means is this giant heavy brick doesn't just plug in like a normal power brick. It's got five pins. So you get the topping, you unbox it, you go, oh, that's pretty nice. And it's a good size. And it's got switches in the back. And it's got this five pin power input. So shh, that sounds serious to me. You get a switch here that says dual or auto. And that just means the headphone output, and there are two of them, will either switch the line output on automatically or you can have it run both at the same time, which is what I've got it currently doing because it's actually working for this. I love the machining between the RCAs. They didn't need to do that. They, they Actually, they probably did need to do that because I couldn't get the board in, but they just machined an oval around both RCAs to give you a little more depth for plugging in the RCA plugs and the shields going around it. That's, that's nice. That's a nice little thing that looks... It looks good, but when you touch it, I'm not, like I could really feel like the, the grooves. Like I wanna slide my finger and I can't really slide them across or I feel like my skin's gonna fucking fall off. Doesn't feel the best. It's not built the best of the group, that's for sure. I don't know, it's got a couple scratches and, and, and marks and mars. It's got a high res audio sticker because everything needs that. The front of the unit now, says A30, you get a three and a half millimeter and a quarter inch, which is unique to the table. Everything else is just basically quarter inch. So your three and a half and a quarter inch output, they are the same, you really shouldn't plug one or the other. You got your power switch. Now here's where things start getting funky. I've got the piece of paper here because I'm gonna read a thing. Hold on. Paper, paper confuses Zeos. Okay, because I had to look this up in the manual, because I pulled it out. I'm like, it's a headphone amp. I don't need the manual. You got off, low, and high. And my primitive uh, caveman brain that says Masato hot um, is like, oh, low gain and high gain. But there's no volume difference when you switch between low and high. And then next to it, you got this three-way switch, which is 0 dB, 9 dB, and 18 dB. This is your gain switch. So what the fuck is high and low on the power switch, boss? Hey, boss, what is this shit? And according to the manual, which is mostly Chinese and graphs, that is the power and supply voltage switch. Turn off is off. Low is turn on by low supply voltage and high is turn on by high supply voltage. I have no idea what that means. Literally, it makes no audible difference that I can tell. It, it makes it sound like it's trying to like activate automatically via a high or low sensitivity. It doesn't do that. And it doesn't change. I've literally been, that's my job to sit here and pay attention. What is this switch doing? And I've just been leaving it on high because I figure high sounds best, right? 
shit. And then I put on low, and then the low sounded fine too. So it's like, I don't know, there's no audible change when I switch from low to high on this first switch. If you know better than me, and I'm sure a lot of people do, I don't have to be smarter than like 97% of people on the internet who know about audio. The other 3%, you guys take it to the stars, baby. You get a nice gain switch though. You get a pretty nice swing of 18 decibels, plus nine and plus 18 on the Evite. You get that, you got a nice, it could be a little bit smoother. Like it, it's, it's not a bad knob, I'll tell you this much. Topping has made way worse knobs than this. Shit makes way worse knobs than, everybody makes worse knobs than this topping. The little, little indicator dot goes past minimum and stops at maximum. It's nicely machined. I don't think you could pull it off, I'm not gonna try. Uh, actually, the ring around it, see that gapping? It's a little off center, the gap, just a small, actually, no, I might be wrong, it might be perfect. But it glows blue behind it, well, like you're supposed to have, because that's what everything does. Uh, and this is the only amp on the table. We're gonna, again, we're gonna get to the shootout with that, but this has a line output. This literally is line input and line output. You cannot control the output on the back with a volume knob. You can't plug powered monitors into this and control their volume. It is just a pass-through. And you could have either cut off that pass-through when you plug it in, or flip that little switch and have it just pass-through. So we're gonna hook this back up. We're gonna start getting this review ready to go. And it's important that this does that pass-through because I'm bouncing the Gashelli Labs Arc Enog 2 Pro DAC, single-ended, into this out of this and then into the uh, Arcal Pro. So it's actually acting as its own little like splitter pass through. So let me get this plugged in. One, two, buckle my shoe. And then the massive power brick plug. It's like that. Oh look, here's our blue, here's our blue ring of, it's actually okay, I'm actually okay with blue for fucking once, because it's not shining through something, I don't see it directly, it's just, it's just nicely lighting up in the background of this, of this thing, it's just nice. I, I can live with that. If that's as much blue, I put on that Emotiva and I die, everything's fucking blue. Even that LED is just blue right in my fucking face. But that, I can live with that, it's a, it's a momentous occasion, all right? There's a blue indicator that doesn't bother me that much. So let's leave that running, and let's talk about uh, the Oracle Pro. Now the Oracle Pro, it's got some quirks. Now if you don't know who Gashelli Labs is, I just reviewed their Enoch Pro in a separate video. And small company, like real small, that I have a bit of an influence over because I ask for certain things and they send me prototypes to test, etc. So slight bit of bias in this review, just a little bit. I'll admit that up front because I'm human and I need to, I try to make things happen in the industry. And this is a good way to do it, is to find someone who wants to build DAX, and they can say, wants to build DAX and amps, I'm like, all right, change this, or do this, or change that. And it's it's nice, so I can could, I could put my hand in a little bit in the pot and stir. So let's look around this thing. Um, two inputs, but one's a three and a half millimeter, one's an RCA, and then your 12 volt input. This has the smallest power brick of all the amplifiers on the table. This is that one right there, a little bit tiny, like it's a two amp, 12 volt, it's tiny. Um, it comes with, and um, they're gonna have to explain to me why it still comes with this, but it's a three and a half millimeter to quarter inch adapter, which would make sense in their old amplifiers where the only output on the front was a three and a half millimeter, and you have, most people have like big ass headphones and quarter inch. So this makes sense on the old Arkel non-pro which they never sold because it had uh, issues. So I don't know why this comes with the new one, but it does, so you get a free uh, three, unless they stop including that. I think they could pretty much stop including that. Because if you're gonna use a three and a half millimeter input, you're gonna use an aux cable to your computer or to your sound card or an aux cable to your phone, et cetera, to use it there. Here's your RCA inputs and here's your 12 volt. The end of the back, uh, the front. And these are, you could see it's, 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 I literally know their first names. It's Gino and Sherry. Make these, right? And you can see they're made like, he prints out things in the bedroom and he's got this garage for assembly. This is very, very homegrown American, like we're starting a company and this is what we're gonna do. So I'm all more than happy to push push this forward. Little power button here. 
power. Little input slash LED, we'll get to that. Here's your headphone plug, which is a quarter inch. There's your power indicator, which I doesn't even need to have a hole drilled in it because it'll just make the thing glow. And here's your volume pot, which is very nice and very smooth, actually. You can just smell how smooth that is. Can you feel how smooth? Like, I kind of want to just, like, let it... If, it, if the amp is a little bit lighter, I just let it drop. It would, like, be butter. So that's it. And this, this comes in clear, black, and purple, which is a color I chose. I'm like, hey, can you make it in purple? And he's like, we could absolutely find purple boxes. So now I have purple boxes because I love purple. This amplifier's got some interest. I'll, 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 before I plug it back in signal, let's just give it power for a second. Is it gonna turn on? It shouldn't, it should just be off. Okay, off. Power on. It, it does the dance, let's do that again. Let's do that again. Can I get the camera like inside of it? Okay, so we've got how many sets? Three sets of red and blue LEDs inside. And you can hold down this and you get either all red or all, all blue or nothing if you don't want to be a show off and you're just like, I just need the damn thing to be a headphone amp, stop bothering me. And then if you hold it down again, they come back on. So you can, and it actually at night, it's hard to see during the day with the fucking all the lights on in the apartment. But this will gl this glows such a nice like purple glow when you have everything running that I'm, it's, it's basically for me. Um, this button is also the input switch, so you get to choose between the three and a half millimeter and the RCA with the front button, which is ba-bump, listen. You can just hear the relay clicking back and forth. Um, no gain switch. Now that's... Imagine if you built headphone amps for the first time and you built DAX for the first time and no one told you how you're supposed to do it. Basically what Kashelli Labs has done and you could either count this as a feature or a negative, is they put the gain switch on the DAC. I reviewed the DAC. The DAC review has either come out or hasn't come out. And this has three separate voltage outputs for the DAC. And that makes sense, because you want to just set up your amp, done, and then you want to limit the volt, like a power amp, like you'd set up a power amp and you'd use a preamp to control it. So instead of, feeding this hot signal and then cr crushing it down with a low gain that, that limits everything. They've left this on the most insanely stupid high gain ever, and then you're supposed to crush the signal. Now that's great when you're using these as a pair. The problem comes when you're trying to use another DAC with the Gashelli Labs amp. It tends to be a little bit too much and I end up lowering FUBAR down. Like 12 fucking decibels, like a lot, to get this to behave, let's say. Let's plug it in and we'll, we'll, we'll go over it in more detail with headphones plugged in. Uh, okay, we're plugged, we're pluggied. Hide some of those wires, boys and girls, just hide. Ready, ready, ready? Oh, there's no nightmare under this black sheet. It's a black sheet of happiness. Black sheet of happiness, it's no bad underneath there. What do we got? 82,000 X's, plug in here. So here's the thing about the um, topping that sort of surprised me a bit. If I could slide my chair, I break my chair. What the hell is happening? It's too much sun. When you when you do anything on the front of this topping, there's a delay. And it's not like, oh, it's a bad delay. You plug in headphones and it goes click and then the headphones come on. The volume is instantaneous. The volume is an actual analog input. And I'm going to put this up on gain. I'm gonna set that to high. I'll song this one. But as soon as like, well here, let's see if you can, I have it pretty loud. So let's see, I'm gonna plug it in. There's that split second and then you hear it go click and the click's the relay over. If we were to plug in something else that's not quarter inch, click separately and then plays. And I'm pretty sure if I do this, give me a second. Yeah, no, it does not. You know, it does not want that, by the way. Bad. Don't do bad. A lot of these that do, like, two outputs tell you in the manual. I don't remember reading in the top one, but the don't try to feed two headphones at the same time. The impedance will... will they don't have two separate amplifiers. It just switches between which one. So you do not want to have to for, force it to feed a 50-ohm load and a 30-ohm load. Those are way less 
efficient than these, then everything sounds bad. All right. I was going to shit on this topping for how it sounded. Since I have all these here. And I think it's not so much that the topping sounds very bad. It's just that the Gashelli Lab sounds very fucking good. Like, very fucking good. Like, very, like, very good. Like, competition-wise. The issue being, since it's... Here, let's plug this in, now that I'm talking about it. I'm on the wrong input. I'm on the wrong input, and there's sort of like a gentle buzz hum, because I'm on the wrong input, and it's an open circuit. Switch it, and this goes away. And it, it's... I have this on, like, the medium gain, and I'm gonna put it to the lowest gain. Hold on. Oh, no, that's the highest gain. That's the highest gain. That's the mediumest gain. Oh, I switched the input. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Wait, no, one more. One more. That's the highest. High, medium, and then it should be one more. Low. So now that I've got this on the lowest gain outputs, now the Gashelli Labs here, on these headphones specifically, because these are super easy to drive. And that's the thing. If you have super easy to drive headphones, you're going to either have to, if you're using this amp, limit your output on your digital source or use their DAC and set it to the lowest because it can be so overpowered with a normal any other DAC that when you turn the no the volume knob literally and by the way indicator is bad I have to I give give everyone shit um this one is not the worst I could see the dot shit is bad you guys are okay you b bad indicator bad there's a little notch there i'm gonna have to get a marker and just just like fuck this way or maybe i'll just get blue tack and wrap it around it because you can't tell where the volume is and i love being able to tell where the volume is from afar and that little that little fucking i was gonna say axe wound i'm not gonna say axe wound i won't say it but that little fucking it looks like something dropped it and made the indicator would here's how powerful this amplifier is by default you can, the, usually with um, analog pots, you'll get a channel imbalance. You just have to. Like, unless you spend $7,000 on German pots, you get a slight channel imbalance. One channel comes up first, then the other follows it, and then they're even the way, rest of the way up. If you feed this full, insane signal from most DACs or this on high, on an efficient set of headphones, you could literally have listenable volume in the right channel or in whatever channel it feels like it first, and then the second one comes up and then you're too loud. So you have to either lower your source or, or get this DAC that matches it perfectly and lower that to low and then it's fine. Point is, it's like, this is on the lowest. We are going to play these. I went from there to there on the lowest. Bob Marley, nice. Epic score, kamikaze. Yeah, I'm at like, well, there's noon. That's straight up and down, which is pretty good. Marilyn Manson. Like, that's as loud as you ever need to play these, these efficient ass headphones. On the lowest output gain of the DAC, into this. Now, if you put a harder drive pair of headphones on it, such as, Take this off the Aeolus. Give me the 20s. We'll plug you in here for shits and or giggles. And now, now we've got a hard as fuck to drive pair of headphones. And now, maxed out. And it's it's a good, it's an okay volume, but you don't want to be maxed out. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go back and you're gonna pop this. Actually, it's gonna go from the lowest to the highest. Boom. So now you've unleashed all the signal to this thing, which is just set to like, it's like a Corvette that you buy at a, at a dealership, but instead of a gas pedal, it's just a brick. Like, what is this brick doing? And oh, the brick's glued to the floor and the gas pedal's at a hundred. So it's like, you had better put in the, sh you better just, you know, go on very steep hills so that you don't go 180 miles an hour. So now on the fullest, 
the fullest. The highest output voltage of this into this. <laughs> We're back here and these are loud. The T20s are loud. I'm actually gonna put this down one more notch to medium and now I can go to noon and it's like a listenable volume. So it, it's basically, if you get the Gashelli Labs Arkle, you have to be prepared to either already have the Enoch Pro or to limit your volume digitally or on your DAC if you have like an SMS LSU8 or what are the other DACs out there that have volume controls? There's very few of them. But you have to be willing to crop the output voltage so that the Arkle Pro doesn't kill your shit. Of course it is a, it just wants to power everything very hard all the time. Go, 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 go. As is proof by these and being, I can't even describe how loud they can get. And it's purple. Now it's red. Now it's blue. Now it's off. Leave it on purple. Okay, I just smashed the thing. So back now down to the lowest settings of that. Pull this out. Thank you, T20s. Let's let's do this. I haven't done this in a bit. Oh, we got this here, right here. Just, just, just a mess. It's just a mess happening. Um, down in, oh babies, oh babies. Unplug you for a sec. Actually, let's. It's fine. It's fine. So now the topping can cope with the low output gain of this because I can just put the the gain up to whatever I need. Actually, let's see what. So that's that. Let's plug it in this and see how we're doing on the lowest gain. All right, I could pop this up. One. Two. Okay. Also delay on the gain switches. Like I, I plug it in, there's a delay. I flip the gain switch, delay, click, delay, click. No delay on this, because I can't, again, tell what the high-low gain switch is doing. If I was shooting out between these two amplifiers, which I am, ignoring everything else on the table, If I was shooting out between these two and using the 789 as my reference, which is why it's here, um, I don't particularly like the way the topping sounds. I don't know, it just sounds uh, veiled and cluttered and all those audiophile words when you look up what bad audiophile in this go. And it shouldn't. It, it's got all these graphs and it's got that power brick that's the size of a fucking monster truck and it's just, you plug into it it takes that second, it clicks over, it's, it's, let's get to a song that's not Marilyn Manson, it's actually Kona Suba, Love Suto. Otis Taylor, yell your name. Like, look at this. It sounds fine. It sounds absolutely fucking fine, all on its own. The problem being this is e-reviews and no one's supposed to get an A30 and then put six other headphone amplifiers on the desk or five others and then review it. It sounds very good. Very clear. It's, just, it's powering it just fine. Even on the lowest setting output of this, this is perfect. And this sounds better. I just did it. I just, it just did this. It just... They're, this is getting the signal first. It's coming out of this stack, into this, out of this, into this, and this still doesn't sound as good as this. I mean, it doesn't, I mean, I would still buy Aeolus if I heard them out of a topping A30. And I was hoping that the magic that I found in the topping MX3 would sort of be bleeding into the other tech. The, but I think based solely on the, 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 the build, 
the build of the Topping MX-3. This is a different factory. Topping is a brand name, and I don't think Topping is like a building in like Shaolong Ling, China. That was not a racist remark. I'm literally, I guarantee you that exists as a place in China. I guarantee you there is no Topping head office where they design everything and then manufacture everything. Topping is like six different manufacturing facilities and they're all like, build this, all right, whatever. And then, you know, guy A designs this one, guy B designs the MX-3, which is amazing. Then guy C is designing something else, it's portable. And this does not contain the magic that the MX-3 does. So, I mean, it would it should be the exact same form factor, like the D10, everyone loves the D10. Had a couple complaints about the D10 failing, but it's the same design and build and love that everyone else seems to be finding for like that I found for the MX-3. So, this doesn't need to be in the shootout. The Gashelli Labs Arco Pro utterly destroys it in the way it sounds. Because when, I, when I'm doing this, like literally, wait, where am I? my Otis Taylor? That's just awful Otis Taylor. Carpenter Brute. Anarchy Road. That's a nice, high-quality audiophile song. Swap it to this. Automatically just sounds wider, more separated. You got a little more... There's a like a... I don't know how to describe it, and I'm an audio reviewer, so... It, the, the difference between this and this is sort of like the difference I've heard between most amps and the 789. If I'm focusing just on these two, regardless of the issues that this has where you have to limit the source and there's buzzing when you switch to an empty input and all that, and the fact that it's bright LEDs in there, which I'm okay with, and if it was frosted, it'd probably look even cooler. Just point that out, maybe it'll be an entire frosted fascia. But it's nice to look in the inside of it this sounds better than this enough that I don't care about this anymore. And the uh, the next video where I do a real long sh talk about the rest of them, the Shelly Labs is, is going to get real fucking close to that atom. Real fucking close. The problem is going to be that, you know, if you're not feeding off this and you can't drop the voltage input, you basically are stuck with an amp that's just way too powerful and sketchy, oh my god, all the time. But I understand the reasons for it. You don't want to add a gain switch to, to, to cut the balls off your amp. You'd rather just limit the output of your DAC. And I can do that with FUBAR. Or I could do that with the Emotiba down there. You can do it with the JDSF's EL DAC or the old DAC. So it's just, it's this very, it's like a, it's not proprietary, but it's a weird system, sister love between these two things that make them work perfectly together for different gain headphones. This thing, on the other hand, it feels like it has features, like it's got this high-low gain that I, I could swear to you on my the guise of my whole family. There's low. Absolutely zero change between high and low on that switch. Just nothing, nothing happens. The gain switch is nice. I do like the fact that it'll, it'll swap gains in a pretty substantial amount. And it's a delay, so you know it's doing internal switching. It's not just some dumb switch with voltages running into it. It's talking to a circuit in there. A circuit saying, oh, hello, the uh, switch was flipped. Would you please enable this gain sitting? And the rest of the board's going, oh, well, I, well, I would love to do that for you. If this had better sound quality, it would be like a pick of the litter. But it doesn't. And the fact that it has lineouts is interesting, too, because that means you could run from your DAC to this amp, to like a speaker amp, and you don't have to worry about dicking with the volume here or getting splitters out of your, oh, I'm about to talk about splitters in the next video. Good try topping. Doesn't sound good enough for me to like jerk off about it. I'm still gonna link it in the description, and if you buy one, I'm still not gonna be like upset, because I mean, if you can't cope with what this does, or for some reason the Atom isn't available, again, we'll get to that sort of shit. But I mean, I, I've gotta sit here and I've gotta just listen my job, let's go back to that because it's, why not go back to this? It's just a nat more natural, it just sounds, Im I wish pasta was here right now because pasta has this saying, uh, headphone amps don't make a fucking difference, change my mind because she got a Magni 3 and 
she was using whatever she was using before, and she got this, and she's like, "This makes no difference. There's a hundred dollar waste of hundred waste of a hundred dollars." And um, keep in mind, this is now also powered balanced off of this, so there's like a whole other level of. Oh, it also almost just came to that. All right, so let's just let's put things into perspective. All right, I don't think this is a seven eighty nine killer. But it's the next step down, and this is way more steps down. All right, this video is over. I'm, I've been ranting about it for too long. I love this thing. It's got its quirks. I love this thing, other video. This thing, I tried to love it. It'll be in a yard sale. First to the 10th of every month, I sell things that I've purchased, or this companies have sent to me that I don't need anymore, and it helps me buy the next thing for the channel, or the wall. No, most of the channel. It helps fund the wallpapers. That's all you got to know. So join the Patreon for $5 or more a month. You guys do the yard sales. Uh, $10 or more a month gets you into a private Telegram chat. And I say private, but there's like 90 people in it now, which is much less private. But everyone there is super into audio, into helping each other out, loves shoving screwdrivers through their, their planar drivers and going, fuck. So if you want to just join in that little private bundle, that's great. Uh, you get to see all these videos early by at least a week. So that's the benefits of the Patreon. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who sent things in. I bought this. Gashelli sent these. I bought that. Someone sent that, which I was using to compare, and that'll be in the next video. Uh, next video, probably the last cleanup video, will be me uncovering this. You'll finally get to see what's under here. Unless you're in my hundred dollar on my ten dollar Patreon chat, then you've already seen me going mad putting this together. And uh, we'll talk about everything in a giant wrap up. So Masato's in the wall in the Masato wallpaper in the description. Links in the description, Patreon in the description in the upper right, and at the end screen right here. Click in this middle thing or check out one of these videos. Thank you for stopping by next time.